and thanks for joining us for another Molly Motorsports Tech presentation. In this segment, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at failure analysis as we try to give you a glimpse of some of the tools and techniques that we use for analyzing um, parts return for evaluation. Today specifically, we're going to be talking about a pin boss or circlet failure. In some of our other videos, we've given detailed procedures for how to install the round wire locks that we use in our most common power pack kits. We also covered the importance of making sure that the clips are correctly seated and shortly we'll be seeing the, the impact of skipping or potentially overlooking that important step. The piston that we have here has obviously failed in a fairly spectacular fashion. We see heavy impact marks on the crown, the skirts have been impacted and flipping it over. Obviously we're missing a complete skirt. We have a pin boss that has been removed and heavy impact marks and cleavage across the entire piston. As we look closer at the part, we can see the very classic telltale signs of a case where the pin has walked out of one pin bore, been supported by one boss, and then eventually broken that boss away. Looking closely, we can see that by impact marks where the pin is contacting both the inner diameter of the opposite pin boss and the window or balcony area on the opposite side. We also see that as the pin was still supported by the rod and had not yet broken away the, the remaining pin boss, the piston's going to have a tendency to rock or wobble as it's traversing the bore. What that does is it leaves us a very rounded surface or bell mouth edge on each side of the pin bore. A combination of these factors give us a pretty clear indication that this clip was missing, allowed the pin to walk over, and then eventually ripped the lower half of the piston out of the, uh, out of the part. In this particular case, we were very fortunate that the engine was shut down quickly, and we have a fairly intact piston remaining. Um, in a lot of cases, we don't have this complete of a part to look at, and in many cases, we're working with smaller bits and pieces and trying to, to put them back together to get a, a clearer picture of the complete failure, but we're still looking for some of the same um, signs and symptoms that we see on this more complete part. Coming into cases where not even the smaller pieces are available, there are still options that we have for looking at other components. Um, if the pin is available, we can look at witness marks on the edges or chamfer of the pin that show us where the circlip was or was not riding. Typically, there will be a very uniform concentric mark all around the circumference of the chamfer that shows where the interface between the pin and the clip occurred. In this particular case, we have a concentric mark on one side and almost no mark or a very small diameter um, witness marks on the other, indicating that that clip hadn't been fully seated into the groove. The smaller diameter of the witness mark shows us that that clip wasn't fully seated in the groove and was much more probable to be forced out through side force of the pin. Secondly, we can look at the clip itself. Much like the pin, there will be a witness mark where it interfaces or has contact with the pin. Again, we're looking for fairly consistent, even contact around the circumference of the clip and its positioning on the clip. Uneven marks, heavy marks, signs of distress give us an indication of where that clip was positioned in the circlip groove when the piston was running. In the second case, we had a part that wasn't as clearly defined for the root cause of the failure as what we saw here. We had an indication that it was likely a circlip issue, but the failed part didn't give us the full picture. Whereas other parts from the set were available, we started to investigate the installation of the clips that remained and saw that there were several where the clip had been over compressed and actually wasn't allowed to fully spring back and seat in the groove um, indicating incorrect assembly procedures. Um, this part as well as several others in the set were good candidates for ejection of the clip through side force because that clip wasn't fully seated. Lastly, we should mention the significance of running time. Typically, if there's an issue with the clip installation, 
the engine's not going to run 20, 30,000 miles and then suddenly have the clip decide to eject the part. Um, those types of failures usually manifest themselves very quickly and when we hear about parts that are broke on the dyno or in the first few passes of a drag motor or hot laps in a circle track car, that's one of the first things that we look for given the nature of the failure. However, it is possible to have very similar looking failures that will occur at extended durations. In those rare cases, there can be excessive side force on the pin and or fatigue that forces the clip out of the groove or causes a fracture of the material supporting the, the clip. Um, when that happens, the result on the piston may look very similar, but keeping the time factor in mind, we'll dig a little deeper to find out if there are other underlying root causes such as that excessive pin force and what may be causing it. Keep in mind that what we're looking at here today is one particular instance that led us to the conclusions that we've talked about. Many times there are other contributing factors or a combination of factors that could lead to a completely different conclusion, but that's where experience and knowledge comes into play when looking at return parts. We appreciate you watching and be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube as we roll out more in-depth videos on specific piston-related issues and analysis.